I want to take this opportunity to welcome each one of you to this Sunday morning service. Achukua fursa hii kuwakaribisha nyote katika ibada hii asubuhi. I equally want to take this opportunity to welcome those that are watching us from their living rooms. Pia nawakaribisha mnaotazama kutoka nyumbani kwenu sebuleni and the Oster brethren who tune in every Sunday to watch our our preaching on Facebook live. Pia wapendwa wote ambao watatazama kwenye runinga ma Facebook live. My prayer is and those who watch us on television and those who will watch us through YouTube. Ombere langu pia ni kwa wote ambao utatazama kwenye YouTube. Last Sunday I gave you an introduction to the topic the power of prayer. Kwa pili iliyopita niliwapa utangulizi kuhusu nguvu katika maombi. And today I want to go deeper into the first section on the first you know go deeper on what I want to refer to as the first message on the power of prayer. Leo nataka kuingia kilindini kidogo ni wape. Eh ujumbe wa kwanza kuhusu nguvu katika maombi. But before I bring that message to you this morning, kabla ya ule ujumbe siku ya leo, there's a song that I love so much. Na upenda wimbo na upenda sana. Sang my a renowned worship leader by name Kim Walker a very close friend of my son Reverend Stephen Bay in the United States Dio imbo na rafikie mwanangu kule Marekani Jesus paid it all Yesu alilipa gharama yote That message the song after it is finished I will dive in with my brother Pastor Daniel and we will bring the message for today give me that song Nipe ule wimbo
Jesus paid it all. Yes, Christo alili pagara mayote. Hold to him, I hold. Kwake tu die nina denila. Sin left a crimson stain. Dambi ili wacha. Dambi ili acha lama maisha ni mwangu. But Jesus washed it all. Lakini Christo aliyosha yote. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Yes, our Lord Jesus, we bless you. So I bring you a message this morning. I pray that each one of us will feel indebted. Dio buwana. To walk before God in righteousness. Yes. And to seek to hear God and to know him. Buana. Because the price that he paid, Dio none Yesu. of us can pay. Dio and therefore, as I preach this morning on the power of prayer, I pray mm. that you will use me to the glory Dio and to the praise of your holy name. Yes, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Give me Matthew chapter number 14 and verses 22 to 27. Matthew. Matthew chapter number 14, verses 22 to 27. The Bible says immediately Jesus meant his disciples get into the boat and God go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Continues to say, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to do what? Mm. <laughs> to pray. I want to read that again. And when he had sent the multitudes away, and who are these multitudes? He has just fed 5,000 men. Without counting the women and the children. He had just done one of the greatest miracles of his time. If there were 5,000 men, then there were about 8,000 women and probably 3,000 children. And what makes this beautiful is that he fed them from five barley loaves and two small fish. What a miracle! If somebody, if some of us fed over 10,000 people from five barley loaves and small fish, they would not go home. They would be calling every TV station to ask whether they want to cover the miracle. We would open five, six, seven accounts on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram to Post the pictures. There is nothing wrong with doing that. Testifying of what you have done through God or what God has done through you. You know it is either two things. You either do it through God or God does it through you. But I want you to look at the CEO of Christianity what he did. Verses 23 says, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he did something that is very difficult for some of us to do. He went up on the mountain by himself to pray. The Bible says now when evening came, he was alone there in the mountain. Number 24 says, uh, 20, Let's, let's go back again to verse 23 so that I can read it well and go up. Uh -huh. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. Let's go to 24. But the boat was now. Where was the boat of those who had gone ahead? Those who had gone ahead, they were in the middle of the sea. But what was their situation? <laughs> they were 
tossed by the waves. For the wind was contrary to them. Many of you have gone with me to Israel and you know what we are talking about. The wind was contrary. They were ahead. They looked like they were ahead. But their trouble, their journey was not that sweet. Their trouble was not that sweet. That's why I don't care who has gone before me. Or the people I was in class to, I was in class, I were my classmates, and they look like they have gone way ahead of me. Some of them have more vehicles than you do. They drive better and bigger than you do. But I tell you the truth. They may be whatever they are in society today. And there is nothing wrong with people having things. But child of God watching me and listening to me, let me encourage you in the Lord. The Bible says, is fret not because of evil doers. Don't envy those who don't have God. Don't be jealous of them. Because you that a child of God who is walking with God they may be running ahead of you flying above you but Jesus will cause you to overtake them. Jesus will give you what they have and more. The disciples were ahead while Jesus remained on the mountain to pray. The Bible says the boat was in the middle of the sea and it was tossed to or by the waves for the wind was contrary. Verse 25 to we are going to 27. Now in the fourth watch of the night Jesus went to them walking on top of the water. Let's go back to verse, the verse 24 that is behind there. The disciples were in the same water. It was their boat was being tossed to by the waves. The wind was contrary. But Jesus, because he came from the mountain, yes, he was able to walk on what was killing them. He was able to walk on top of what was threatening them. Because when you come from the mountain, your life is never the same. You are not the same person. God is with you. And the Bible says, for with God for with God nothing is impossible for with God nothing will be impossible why am I preaching and it's time to read verse 25 uh, Pastor Dan remind me I should read first <laughs> Now in the fourth watch of the night, a bad night for the disciples, Jesus comes to them walking on the sea. Verses 26 and 27. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a ghost. <laughs> Sounds like pastoring a church. People call you all names. They describe you from bottom to top, not top from bottom. Let me leave that for another day. Because I'm sure you don't look at me as if you don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Ha. They said, 
This is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Because when you are not a prayerful person, fear becomes resident in your house. You can be afraid of anything. From rats to earthquakes to thunderstorms to boiling water. You can tremble for anything. You can tremble because of anything. Because one of the things that prayer gives you is boldness. Prayer gives you what, church? Prayer makes you bold. You may be naturally a timid person. You may be naturally a weak person. You may not be outspoken like I am. But when you are a prayerful person, prayer gives you power. Prayer gives you boldness. Prayer gives you courage. Are you writing those things? Prayer gives you power. Prayer gives you courage. Prayer gives you boldness. And although you may be small, you may be without money, you may be without education, you may be single or unmarried, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord, Prayer will always give you power to confront situations. So when you forfeit prayer, when you choose a prayerless life, you abort your boldness. Because last Sunday I asked you what is prayer. And I gave you a description that I have never given anybody under the sun or heard. I told you according to me, Prayer is an expression of faith in God's power and ability, and I will add another word, to supernaturally move on your behalf. Hallelujah. Prayer is an expression of faith in God's ability in God's capacity to supernaturally intervene on your behalf. Hey, hey, move on your behalf. Do things to get you out. That is why prayer is the only thing that life situations including the devil it is the only language that the devil fears because he knows when you, are, when you pray when I pray heaven will supernaturally move on my behalf and God will do anything to get his baby out God will do anything to get his baby out. My sister Margaret, can you stand on your feet? During COVID-19, you were diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer. And you told God, I am not going down because of breast cancer. I am not dying because of breast cancer. Cancer will leave my body. Cancer will dry up from my body. The doctors thought she was nuts and bolts. taking a matter of death lightly. But you know what? She stood before God. And she told God this COVID-19 season. I am not dying of cancer. And she resists this cancer. As she went through chemo and whatever she went through. She said I will come out. Stronger than I went in. This is not the end of the road. 
barabara. She prayed and asked others to pray. Bala kuambia sisi wengine tumuombe. And cancer knew that when heaven responds oh, come on. prayer gives you a kingdom response and a kingdom manifestation prayer gives you a kingdom response and today as she stands before God and before this congregation this lady is cancer free this lady is cancer free this lady is cancer free not, com- not confirmed by a bishop who is angumbaro I have never went to medical school. I don't know the chemical composition of Panadol. But confirmed by ecologists who went to the university to stand the the science of cancer. They have declared her cancer free. Because prayer gives you power. Prayer gives you boldness. Prayer gives you courage to confront situations. Prayer brings to you a kingdom response. And a kingdom manifestation na pia madhibitisho ya kifalme haleluya can i hear a bigger amen in this house Amina. my god and my father knows baba yangu anaelewa i love prayer napenda maombi i may not be public but i love prayer lakini naipenda when i got saved nashukuru mungu when i got saved nilipo okoka I was handed over a book nilipewa kitabu written by Os- Oswald Chambers kilijoa nakiriwa ama kusemwa na Oswald Chambers because he lived his life in prayer sababu aliishi maisha yake katika maombi then I was I went to Nairobi to a Keswick bookshop nikaenda Nairobi Keswick bookshop it was selling christian material then wakati ule hata siku hizi wanauza vitu ama vitabu vya Kikristo and i bought a book written by andrew murray nikapata kitabu kiliandikwa na huyo mwandishi andrew murray one of the prayer warriors of the last century ambaye alikuwa muombezi mkali wa i consumed hizo. those two books hizo vitabu mbili nilizisoma and a well and a desire to pray was born in me na ndani yangu tamanio la maombi likajao and today i stand before god na siku ya leo nasimama mbele za bwana and before all of you na mbele zenu nyote and testify to you na kuwashuhudia That today is my year number 41. Ya kwamba ni mwaka wa 41. Year number 41. Mwaka wa 41. Waking up at 3 a.m. to pray. Kuamka saa 9 asubuhi kuomba. I have never used an alarm clock. Sijatumia simu ili. It doesn't matter which country I am in. Hainijalishi niko nchi gani. But I loved prayer. I was introduced to prayer by those two people. I was introduced to prayer walks. I started prayer walks before I had a prayer walks. I was living in Buruburu Nairobi. With my step brother and his wife. And I guarantee you I would take a bus, a Kenya bus. And go to Kireleswa. And Lavington. And I would walk in those streets. Of those estates praying. Because the owners have gone to work and the streets were empty. They are not as busy as they are today. And God knows how many times I went to Chiromo. The river beyond be, 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 the river that passes between I mean on the road that goes to Westlands between the casino and uh, and Chiromo Mochari there's a ravine down there Kuna mto mdogo pale It used to be bushy Ulikuwa una kichaka kichaka I would go and hide there Ningeenda na njificha pale The police were not as many as they are Police hawakuwa wengi kama walivyo They would not know whether there was a 
character down there praying. And I would bury my head under prayer for hours. I want you to know you cannot criticize somebody for who they are today because you don't know who they were and the price they are paid to be what they are today. By 1982, I was praying in what is today Donholm Umoja 2 and Kayole. They were fields of grass. Umoja 1 was just under construction. The rest of it was grass. And all the things stolen in Nairobi would be divided by the thieves in those grasslands. And I would go there to pray. And I remember in 1982 August I went to pray and I forgot that there was an operation going on and I had helicopters. There was a police helicopter above me. I wondered what they were doing. Me, I was buried in prayer with my Bible and a notebook. So that if the Lord speaks to me, I write down what he says. There was a chopper above me. The contractor who built Omoja 1 had built roads, tarmac roads around what would be Omoja 2 estate. And I did know some of them thieves had stolen some sipondo oil and petroleum and diesel from a truck and they were dividing it loading it they had, dri- they had driven a truck that is stolen and they were now loading the fuel in their drums outside there walikuwa wameiba mafuta na walikuwa wanakawania huko huko kitakani huko and the helicopter was above nikaona kifereriki juu yangu i thought they have come to pick me so the police said and a mouth at a loud speaker they were speaking to them father sauti surrender wanasema ji salimishe I looked at them. I didn't know that they were looking at those other guys they were telling them to surrender. I never surrendered. I continued to pray. Finally they got their people and they left. <laughs> It was later in 1983. In prayer not in a disco. That I heard God speak to me. The way I am speaking to you is my witness is watching me and listening to me. I heard God speak to me. Audibly. Giving me instructions audibly. With his voice. The way I'm speaking. In prayer. Prayer will give you power. Maombi yatakupea nguvu. Prayer will give you boldness. Maombi yatakupa ujasiri. Prayer will give you courage. Maombi yatakupa ukakamavu. Prayer will bring into your life a kingdom response. Maombi yataleta ufalme ndani yako jibu la kifalme. And Pastor Waithaka there will be a kingdom manifestation. Na kutakuwa na thibitisho la kifalme. Did we finish reading? No. Let's go back to read. I forgot we were supposed to read. Able to to some at them. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Verse number 27. And the last one for today. But immediately mara hiyo hiyo Jesus spoke to them saying Yesu akanena nao Be of good cheer jipeni moyo nyinyi In other words don't be troubled anawaambia musife moyo In other words relax anawaambia basi tulieni It is high ni mimi do not fear musiogope Those words were not spoken spoken the last time that day It is while on your knees. 
While a child of God is going through fire, while they are dealing with a notorious court case, while their teenage daughter is shooting out babies, or their son is lost in drugs, or their husband is double dealing, or the wife has left them, it is in prayer that God still tells his children no matter how high the fire is no matter how strong the wind is it is on the place of prayer that God still tells his children it shall be well it is still in prayer that God would tell you it is high. It is me. You assure you it is me. I am your savior. I am your redeemer. And this thing will not destroy you. This thing will not kill you. This is not the end. That time your landlord is is it has brought auctioneers and they are removing your things from the house because you have not paid rent for five <inaudible> months. It is, it is not in saying you demon possess auctioneers, you crazy <inaudible> men. I paralyze you, I cripple you. Stop, stop malizarding them, they are doing their job. It is in prayer, it is in prayer that God will tell you he still speaks. Tell your neighbor he still speaks. They were in boisterous water. The disciples were almost sinking. It was in that atmosphere when things were tough that Jesus tells them. That Jesus joins them and he tells them it is shall be well because I have come. Because I have come. Because I've come to your situation. Because I've come to your boat. Because I've come to your business. Because I've come to your marriage. Because I've come to your children. Your son is wayward. Your, first, your firstborn daughter is even crazy. What do you think Rari Madowo's father and mother felt yesterday when Rari Madowo whom you know the Nation TV anchor who now lectures in the United States and studies in New York and is out there when he paraded another man and he said, this is my wife. On TV. And we will soon get married. Do you think the father said, glory, glory. I knew my son is going to be a great man. Do you think the mother took an offering and said, I have to give an offering towards this? There has to be an offering towards my son's choice. What do you think that says? It is during such times when Mama Madoa, when she is kneeling down in prayer, that God will tell her, be of good cheer. His decision is not your decision. Your son's choices are not your choices. I will not judge you for his choice. I will not judge you for his decision. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Parents, listen to me. The mistakes of your children are not a mistake. Can you hear me, parents? 
Stop beating you to death and looking down like you are mourning because of the decisions that your sons and your daughters have made. And I have sons and I have a daughter married to our family. I got freed by the spirit when I discovered that. I may be a pastor and a preacher and I am. I'm not pretending I am both. I may be a prophet of God. But Jemina and I, all our responsibilities were to raise our two sons and teach them the ways of God and allow them to love the God that we serve or hate the God we serve. If they choose to love this God because it has to be their choice. It has to be their choice and their decision not yours look, look at a parent next to you and you tell them when they mature up when they become 18 or 20 one, you can only suggest but not command. You can only guide. But you cannot order. Because they have the ability and the capacity as adults to make their own decisions and their own choices. Not yours. You are allowed to feel bad as a parent. You are allowed, I'm allowed to cry when my son makes a stupid decision. But it cannot be my mistake. They will be judged by God by, for their choices. But it's your responsibility to take them before God daily. Job, Job, in the Bible, he said, I offered an offering for my children every day because my children could have sinned against the Lord without me knowing. I took them before God every day. No wonder when they all died, when the house collapsed from all of them, because of the prayer he had deposited over their children, over his children, God was able to give him Others, children. Hallelujah. Amen. Parents, I don't know where this is coming from, but I feel like going on and on. Parents, you are not a failure. You are not a failure. Parents, you are not a failure. You are a success story. The father of a president is still the same father of a robber, an highway robber. If your child chooses to be a highway robber, or your son or your daughter chooses to be whatever they want to be. Contrary to your faith and to your confession. And to everything that you told them. Remember the Bible says, train a child in the way they should go. And when they grow up, when they grow up, that word you told them will become like to the prodigal son, a GPS and fresh instructions. No matter how low they have sung, it will lead them back to the cross of Jesus. It will bring them home. 
Teach them every day. Pray for them every day. Encourage them every day. Speak good to them every day. Even when you know they are not right. And above all, do the hardest. Love them all. That's the hardest. Pastor Dan. Yes, sir. I need to tell some parents here when I'm looking at this side because I'm a parent. God is not punishing you through your children. God is not making you pay for your mistakes through your children. As much as that is a possibility, because there is the principle of sowing and reaping. Can you give me Lamentations 5 7? I hope I'm right. Lamentations 5 7. I hope I'm right. Our father sinned. That's what it says. Yeah, good. Yeah, I got it right. If I was a pastor who likes glory, I would have told you to clap for me. <laughs> The Bible says, look at this. Our father sinned and are no more. But we bear their iniquities. We behave like them. We go through what they went through. That's about DNA generated curses. That is for another day. Can I finish by saying, talking to the parents, God is not punishing me through my children. And God is not getting back to you through the bad choices and decisions that some of our children have made. I believe I helped somebody today. It was not in my message. It is on your knees. 27. Give me verse 27 of our scripture. It is on your Knees. It is on your prayer position that you will hear God tell you be of good cheer. This case will not land you in jail. And that time the prosecution is winning. <laughs> That time the police officer who has arrested you, who has stopped you on the highway, has then taken your driver's license. And has already told you, if you don't give me 10,000, I'll nah, take you to court. If you don't take me to, if you don't give me 2,000, I'll take you to court. Nah, I've been stopped by the cops for speeding because you know that's likely the, the, the only community, the only thing the police will stop me for is speeding. But they don't stop me, they salute me because I come on very high speed. Twice they have removed the roadblock so that I can pass because they don't know who I am. Thank God. But that is wrong. I have repented. The reason why I'm telling you is because I've already repented. <laughs> and I've been forgiven. You see, some of you are still repenting a sin they committed in 1994. Guy, why you go to Nazi? Mugu, why be good? you are in Fanya 1994, February 16th. Have you really forgiven me? God. God. Then they go, if you have not forgiven me, I repent. Natubu. 
kwamba do you really believe that i forgive sins because you are still crying the scar may remain but the sin is forgiven shout to your neighbor and tell them move on move on it is the police officers are standing there they have your license and they are telling you if you want I'm going to take you to court. Now, you give me 2000. If you want me to release you or you go and pay 20000, 10000 in court. So you, yeah, then. some brethren come and ask you, is everything okay? Then they tell you, God will make a way. <laughs> and, and the policeman asks you, are you born again? See, the other day I was stopped by police officers just there. <laughs> I was going to Nairobi on a very serious timeline. And I believe in the speedometer. Those who put the speedometer at 260 know you can go 260. So, they stopped me. <laughs> Up we take <laughs> under the bridge. They stopped me. So, I stopped. Nasimamanga hapo kwa mguu yao. Na hakikisha inakuja kwa kiatu inji mbili hapo. So I stopped. And uh, the police officer told me, let a license yako. Kumpatia. Kumpatia. Why are you over speeding like that? because I'm going somewhere and I'm late. <laughs> Two wrongs never make it right. I know that. See, I preach to myself. So he asked me, why would you speed like that? Where are you coming from? Nyeri? I said, from Thika. He said, Thika, hapa. Now I pick up speed here, yote. Kanembia sasa wewe, uko kwa shida. Kamambia apana, siko kwa shida. Kamambia mina ito bishombai. Na niko kwa shida ni kweli, lakini mi na ubiri kanisani, mutu wa kitubu dhambi, anasamewa. <laughs> kwa hivyo mi na kubali kwa mba nikuwa nafanya nini? Nime speed? Kwa hivyo, kama vile na ubea watu wana, wanasamewa na mungu na wanaenda nyumbani wakiwa huru, mm. na wewe lazima unipatia laisensi yangu. Mm. Na unisame, na niendelea na safari. Kazama hii siyo kanisa. <laughs> Kambia it now is. Mm. So tukiendere hapo, mkubu waki akakuja. Kazama bishop. <laughs> Kumesema mishwa? Kamambia, peana hiyo license. <laughs> Uyu ndia natuambea. Peana hiyo license. <laughs> Alafu wakaniambia, bus tuambe. <laughs> So I ended up holding their hands and prayed for them. On the road. Don't try this. <laughs> I prayed for the traffic police of three of them. It is in such moments when the sea is so boisterous. That if you love prayer, that you hear the Spirit of God tell you, it shall be well. If Jesus was truly the Son of God, and He is even today, and He is God, why did He value prayer? Then Pastor Daniel, yes, sir. why would you not be a prayerful person? Why would you not be a prayer warrior as a child of God? Take me back to verse 23. 
Jesus, after he dismissed the multitudes, Yesu he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Every child of God must set apart time to pray. Every child of God must set up a time of prayer. Whether you are a businessman or a businesswoman, whether you are a preacher or you are a father or a mother, Jesus spent time in prayer before God before he did any major undertaking. Jesus lived a time of prayer. He lived a life of prayer. He is God himself. But he went before his father for strength. He went before his father for comfort. Write those things down. He occasionally went before his father for power. He went before for his father for strength. And you, child of God, me, child of God, I have to do the same. Can you write those notes for me, please? Jesus went before God on his other time. He occasionally went before God for strength. He went for strength before God when things were tough. He went before God for comfort. Yes. Mm. He went before God. Who is in the computer? He went before God. Give me those notes that I'm talking about. Regenerate them and post them up here. He went before God while was here on earth. And you, child of God, you can spend 24 hours in a day without kneeling down before God. Without praying as you drive. Without praying in a, in, in a sudden comfortable area in, in your house. Without even praying while you are in your bed. Without even praying while it's break time. Jesus spent time before God. Before he anointed or chose his 12 disciples. In the midst of so many disciples. Jesus went to the mountain to pray. He went to the mountain to pray. He is God himself. He knows the hearts of men. He knew Judas Iscariot was a thief. He knew Thomas would doubt him. But so that he can serve together with them before he chose them from the multitudes. He went before God. He spent a night of prayer before God asking for discernment although he is discernment itself. Asking God to guide him to the right choice. To make the right choice as he chooses 12 disciples from a lot of people. He pleaded with God to direct him. He pleaded with with Jehovah, his father, to lead him and direct his path. And after he spent a night on the mountain in prayer, he came down and chose 12 men as his disciples. If Jesus can do that, about me, about you. Before he was betrayed and arrested and crucified, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. We were there. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he knelt 
down and prayed until a sweat a sweat piga magoti na kuomba hadi jasho lake until a sweat i have never had sweat if my sweat and i'm sweating right now okay. if my sweat would become blood i would call the police or run to the hospital and forget I have a car to drive. I would run to the hospital because if my sweat has become blood, then I am a dead man walking. But because he knew that the crucifixion was going to be painful, it was going to be tough. It was going to be humiliating. It was going to be sorrowful and painful. He banked prayer first. Did you hear what I just said? He banked prayer. He prayed until he sweat. No wonder he was able to withstand the pain of the cross. Because he prayed. He was given 39 stripes so that you and me can be healed. And they were very painful. The Roman road, Vile, Viboko, the yeah. Roman strip that they were using, the Romans, Vile, against Viboko, the Jews, yeah. they had hooks at the hand. So they would stripe you like this. They would whip you. Whoop you. And, the, and the digis, what are digis? Uh -huh. The strings which had hooks would go around your body and they would pull them out. And they will come out with your flesh. He knew that would be painful. But I need to reduce that pain through prayer. He spent time before God. And prayer became a shield. It covered him. Today, we take, a, we take our children to a new school. Because it does well national, nationally in national exams. And we don't even pray for the school. Oh, we prayed. That is the best school in the region. I know my son and my daughter is going to go to the university. You don't know whether they'll be recruited into Satanism. You don't know whether they will be recruited into homosexuality. You don't know whether they will be introduced into drugs. But because it comes number one on national examination, a whole child of God, and I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about those who never came today, a whole child of God, or a whole preacher like me, fight to take my son and my daughter to that school. And I don't remember to pray and fast. So that even if there are recruiters of Freemasons or Illuminati or drug dealers or fatted sexual vavats that my son or my daughter will be able to study in that school and when they try to recruit him or her into these vices because I've covered them with prayer they will not succeed. We open businesses. A whole business. We take loans from the bank for business. And there is nothing wrong with that. And children of God don't spend time before God watering that idea that 
business concept. So long as they call the bishop to anoint it, or Pastor Idaka, or Pastor Dan, or Pastor Isaac, or Pastor Reverend Jeminambai, or Pastor or Minister Felix, or they call a preacher, or a bishop so and so, so long as we come to don to what we call it to to dedicate what you have already built or what you have established. You, you just build without thinking. Hear me and hear me, children of God. It is not the ticket you have for the train or for the plane that guarantees you to get there. It is, the new, it is not the newness of your vehicle that guarantees that the brakes will work. It is not the strength of your doors that guarantee you that the robbers will not break in. It is not how high the school is rated that guarantees your son or your daughter to succeed. Children of God who are watching me today, children of God who are here today, I want you to hear me and hear me well as I talk about the power of prayer. Just the way you cannot plant a tree and walk away and come after five years to see whether it has grown. When you plant a tree, you have to occasionally do what? Come on. Talk to me back, children of God. If you plant a tree, what guarantees that, that the tree will grow is how well you will water it. Sons and daughters of the kingdom, prayer is the water that waters your tree. When is the last time you poured water on your tree? It is because you are a dangerous man that will make your wife stick with you. Because you are as hot as a plate or you are as hot as coals or as fire. You threaten until you sweat. You back orders to your wife and to your children until they go under the bed. That is not what will keep them loyal to you. I'll give you a new formula today. Water them in prayer. Water them. Water your children with prayer. Even when they are making the wrong choices. Go before God and cut the root of evil. Destroy the plan of the devil over your husband, over your wife, over your children. Cancel the plans of the devil. It is not because you have filled your car with fuel and it's brand new KDA that will guarantee you that when you start a journey, you will finish it. There are covenants made with the devil against your life. There are demonic altars built in in certain places. I drove my V8, the black one, triple seven K to to Dar es Salaam. I was going to uh, I was going to Morogoro, Tanzania. Just to rest. I stopped in Arusha, rested for two days. I drove all the way to the Sambara Mountains. I rested for three days. And I wanted to go to Iringa and then drive back to Arusha. And when I and something kept on telling me when I left the Sambara Mountains. That I should not proceed to Iringa. That I should turn back. I told my wife, we had permission and blessing with my wife to go, from, from my wife to go. She knows when I take a me time, I go alone. 
When it's our time, we go together. When it's family time, we go together all of us. Or we take another family, we go with them. But this time was my me time. But I left the Usambara mountains. I lost the desire to drive on. I'm heading towards Dar es Salaam, Chalinze Junction, so that I can go to Morogoro. And I have no peace. Three times I tried to make a U-turn and come back. But being the knucklehead that I am, you know what a knucklehead is? Google will tell you. Never call me a knucklehead. I can only call myself. Three times I tried to turn. By the time I went through, I arrived in Chalinze, I was not sure whether I should go to Morogoro or go to Dar es Salaam. Or return back. I had no drive. And I turned into a bus, into a petrol station. I love ice cream. I like when it's cold because I drive my car when it's very cold. I wandered in that gas station and ordered ice cream and some two chocolate bars of sneakers. And I pretended I was taking them, but I was wondering, God, why are you denying me to go away? Finally, I said it would be unfortunate for me to drive back on the same road. Let me drive to Morogoro, then to Dodoma, and then come to Arusha, and that will look like I knew what I was doing than going back on the same road. And I dropped eating my sneakers. Mm, I love them. I went. I arrived in Morogoro town. And I wanted to stay a night in Morogoro. I entered into a petrol station, still feeling like I should go back. The first petrol station I entered, I filled up my vehicle. I came out of that petrol station. And because I didn't know whether to turn back or go this way, I decided to turn back. This time I just drew a bait. It was too late. A motorbike carrying two people plowed into my car. Boom! And I had two Tanzanians on the ground. Have you ever asked God, What is all this? They were down. My vehicle was bumped into next to my door. The crowd was forming. Matakuja Sakun, Iliambao, Juya, Tanzania, you require now Gererewa. Kwanzanim Kenya, what was Kenyatta? I stood in my vehicle and God gave me peace. Mwakalipia Mani, Yingi, peace, Yingi. And I had the Spirit of God tell me it shall be well. And I'm surrounded. So I came out. I looked at the guys, I told them, jump into the car, I'll take you to the hospital. You are Peleke Hospital. Wakasema hapana utaenda kuuya utaenda kumalizia huko utaenda kutupa kwa kwa muto huko uendi mahali hata wewe uendi mimi kanyama tukangojea polisi wakakuja tukata long story short the police came at the end of the day they checked what was wrong and what and what and i was told what mtu apikipika watu walikuwa wameumia vibaya wakaambiwa wapeleke hao hospitali wako na makosa pole sana mkubwa waliniita mkuu pole sana mkuu gari yako imeumia and then he said, and I know what is happening later on but die last year a man gets saved who was a former satanist and he comes to a church and he testified. He said, there's a preacher called Bishop Mbai, Titus Mbai in Kenya. Here in Kenya. Where is he from? 
Bishop Mbai wa Kenya. He said this in Kika. He said, we were instructed to kill him on a very terrible accident at the Wami Bridge. Wami Bridge, those who know the road to Dar es Salaam, is where people die. Wami down this way, almost one and a half kilometers, two kilometers down this way. Mm. And this way, in Maroli, and I end a Jew. And of a truth, I was following a truck at Wami Bridge. And because I was praying, it stopped and it started coming behind me. And I swerved and entered because it's a four by four. I entered through the bush and took off and the road crashed behind me. And I continued before I had the bus course. He said that day he was supposed to die. We had been given orders to kill him that day. He doesn't know me. When you water your safari with prayer, when you water your husband, your children, your wife, your business, your money, your everything with prayer, when I missed where I was supposed to be dead, crossed by a truck, they made sure that I never succeeded going beyond Morogoro. I was crossed by a motorbike. And I ended up driving back on the same road. What was the spirit of God telling me when I left the Usambara Mountains? Do not proceed with this journey. Such things, such instructions don't come when you are not praying. I will continue on Sunday. Could you have saved that situation if you prayed? Could you have survived that wrecking experience if you prayed? A Satan is get saved. And he comes to Kenya and he testifies in a certain church. And that day he says they were instructed to kill me. They knew I was on that road. A sacrifice had been given and Satan is recruited to kill me. And I succeeded. But with an accident. It is not the newness of your car. It is not how much money you have. It's a child of God. Put prayer. Bank prayer. Pray over your wife. Pray over your children. Pray over your girlfriend. Pray over your boyfriend. If you are single and you want to get married, the engagement ring is not enough. Pray over that girl. Pray over that girl. Pray over that, Pray over that young man. And, and broken engagements are not a sign that you are unmarriable or you can never marry. Sometimes God is saving you from going to Wami Bridge to die. As I continue with this topic on the power of prayer, my desire is that each one of you will be on fire for prayer. Pray until the answer comes. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. On Sunday, I'll take you from there. You'll discover Jesus has to conquer the pain of, of the cross. Because he prayed. Jesus was able to even overcome the betrayal of Judas Iscariot. Because he prayed. Betrayal is painful. I'm dealing with one as we talk. But prayer will keep you above the water. 
chungu sana lakini maombi yatakuweka juu ya maji prayer will keep your head maombi even, if, even if your legs are in the water hata kama maji maji yamelesha vya water has come up to your chest hata maji kama yamefika kwenye shingo prayer will keep your head maombi yatashikilia chochote above the water juu ya maji to be continued kuendelezwa but this coming sunday jumapili ijayo But can we talk about prayer and not pray? How many of you have something they can take before God right now for five minutes? Put your Bibles and your books and your phones down. And let's stand on our feet. Can I have either a song or can I have Kenudia and somebody on the drum set? You know, we just kind of uh, just kind of kind of kind of kind of kind of or you just give us the song that we sang. I hear yeah the, the one for Kim Walker just give me that let's just kind of prepare ourselves let's just get ready is there an issue that you want to water before God in prayer is there something that you would want to take to God in prayer it's one of you lift up your hands and let's begin come on is it coming can we know whether it's coming or another please in the name of Jesus put the volume up so that you don't hear each other I want you to pray before God I want you to thank God that you are alive I want to thank God that he has given you life Jesus took everything before God in prayer and he himself was the son of the living God. I want each one of you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus take it up. In the name of Jesus I want each one of you to take a moment before God in prayer. I want you to take that thing before God in prayer. I know you don't want anybody to hear nobody is going to listen to you. Just take it before God in prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Is it your son? Is it your daughter? Is it your husband? Is it your wife? Is it your business? Is it your is it your finances? Is it your studies? What is this thing that you need to take before God in prayer? Come on somebody. What is this issue that must be broken to God in prayer? Take it before God in prayer. Take it before God in prayer. Take it before God in prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on somebody, everybody, 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 everybody. Everybody, take it before God in prayer. Take it before God in prayer in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus.
Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Jehovah God, you are exalted and you are lifted up. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness, O God. Thank you for your faithfulness, O God. Thank you for your faithfulness, O God. Thank you for your faithfulness. I bless your name. And I exalt you, Lord. Yes, in the name of Jesus. I hate to stop you from praying. I hate to stop you from praying, but we need to go home in the mighty name of Jesus. We, we become, if we go back to prayer, God will come with his, will send his rain. God will send his rain. When we go back to prayer, God will release his miracles and signs and wonders. And this is the time to call upon God. I hate to stop you from prayer. But brethren, revival is here. Revival is here. Revival is now. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you. Breathe afresh in this house again. Breathe afresh again in this house. Let your voice be heard with clarity. Visit us again, oh God. Revive each one of us, Jehovah God. Revive us again. Revive us again, Jehovah God. Let destiny be on fire for God. Let every child be on fire for God. Let every young girl be on fire for God. Let every young man be on fire for God. Let every young mama be on fire for God. Let every, every young husband be on fire for God. Let the old be on fire for God. Light your fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. May every yoke of sickness be broken in this house. May every disease disappear from your body in this house. May every closed door open for you and every gate open for you in the name of Jesus. May the nation of Kenya be united during this constitutional moment in the name of Jesus. May every accident and incident and mechanical breakdown, every fire accident, calamity, disease, COVID-19, may it be bound in the name of Jesus. May money come. May there be a breakthrough in finances. May this ministry experience a financial flood in the name of Jesus. May that truck be paid. May that bus be bought. May that other mini truck be bought. May the classrooms that we want to build for your glory and the halls outside here be constructed. May the prayer chamber be set up, oh God. The five floor prayer chamber, may it come up in the name of Jesus. May the business center at the former prayer chamber come to fruition. May this sanctuary be rebuilt to the glory and to the praise. May every business that is struggling be revived. May every marriage that is going through turmoil be healed. May every misunderstanding be broken in the name of Jesus. May those that have caused us pain be rebuked by the Lord. May you scatter our enemies seven ways. Like you have said, may you cast the spirit of madness in the camp of our enemy in the name of Jesus. May every court case be concluded 
in the name of Jesus and may every child of God be vindicated. May those that have taken our land return it back. May those that have taken our plots and changed the title deeds to their names, may they be rebuked in the name of the Lord and may they repent with tears and bring back our properties. Jesus. May every wayward son and every wayward daughter be saved. And may they come home. May they come back home. May every wayward husband, may every wayward wife be returned by the Lord to sanity. And may they come back to the sanctity of their marriage. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give Jesus a very big hand clap. Let's give Jesus a bigger hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. That pupusela is doing a very good job. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know that we are at church today? Come on, let me see. Thank you. Now wait and pray and make it your habit to sneak out. You cannot sleep for eight hours and not share an hour with God. We have medical doctors here and they will not agree with me. But I sleep for three hours. And I'm not a somnambulist. And I'm not a zombie. Mm -hmm. And my body is not crumpling. Mm. Make it an habit to cut the roots of the enemy and the root of every calamity and threat. Cut them on your prayer time. Then during the day you can walk like you don't know nothing. But you are waiting for that tree to dry up. Sleep for 10 hours. It's good. Eat well. Put on this. Sanitize. Keep social distance. The first week of December, we will be having a prayer conference here. A prayer conference here. Monday to Sunday. And I will have me, myself, and I to preach and two other invited guests because it's time to pray until the answer comes. Take your seats as we get our tithes.